but I called you our very own Bill Gates, uh, both IT innovator and philanthropist in terms of coming up with new learning solutions. Just talk to us about what can be done with a mobile phone. Well, I think in Africa, a mobile phone becomes a multi-purpose device. And uh, the first time that uh, people would use the internet would be from their mobile handset. Uh, it just makes sense because there's uh, 15 mobile phones compared to maybe one fixed line in Africa simply because of the um, scattered environment and the geography that you have to cover from a telecoms infrastructure perspective. Right. Um, phones are also very affordable in Africa and uh, in many countries what's very important is to, for example, have features like a torch because uh, electricity infrastructure is so poor uh, and the ability to learn from mobile uh, is certainly allowing us to bridge the digital divide and, and really create the ability for anybody to be able to uh, learn. I've got a, a six-year-old and a ten-year-old and every single time they've got a school assignment, we Google everything. Yeah. And if uh, you could have everything available on your mobile handset, yeah. it would make life a lot easier for you to be able to All reach right, information. Let's talk about new learning uh, solutions or mobile learning because we know that healthcare and education remain two of the weakest human development um, factors in Africa and that's where we need the greatest input. Now uh, rural Africa in particular could benefit from this. A hundred percent. So what's nice about the interactive learning environment that's available for mobile or on the internet um, is the fact that you can uh, actually assess in real time what the knowledge is uh, that's been attained by, by the person who's actually learning. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability for you to make it very interactive and be able to get uh, people to chat to each other in remote areas and really be able to make more of a collaborative learning environment, which is very, very exciting. There's features today in interactive learning that allows you to chat to peers around the world, to right. chat with your lecturer remotely, the ability for you to get information and be assessed in real time and, and uh, being able to see how well you're doing. So it's a very interactive way of learning and uh, any course could basically yeah. become available to anybody in a remote area. Uh, now, um, I hope most Africans are not like me. They don't just have a basic phone, but people don't have smartphones either because they're very, very expensive. And the general use of a mobile phone is communication, is SMS, and increasingly it's mobile banking transactions that use very basic uh, SMS, MMS facilities. What sort of content in terms of data is needed in order to foster e-learning and what are the costs? Yeah, so I think, I think what we're seeing is, is the need for smartphones and smartphones are growing worldwide by, uh, they estimate that currently it makes about 17% of all phones but it will become 42%. Um, and I think what's required is, is the ability to get low cost smartphones in Africa because as you were rightfully said, most people will get their phone free with a service mm -hmm. or a very low cost handset mm -hmm. and the average revenue per user in Africa is fairly low, ranging from $1 to $15. So to be able to buy a phone like this, like the iPhone that has revolutionized uh, the market at four five hundred dollars is just yeah. uh, unbelievable it's, it's yeah. not it's not going to happen so we've come up with a low-cost handset like this that's made in China from the same factory yeah. uh, that, that, ma that Nokia makes handsets and this phone is available for sixty dollars which is obviously yeah. a lot more affordable and then you are able to uh, at the need that you have is a minimum of internet connectivity to be able to get the information delivered yeah. to your phone via the internet but there's a lot of uh, very nice SMS based solutions as well which allow you to interact right. with content on Let's the Let's just talk about the collaboration that needs to be done with the operators in terms of getting relevant new learning material to the schools because it's wonderful to have a plethora of search engines but in order for it to be uh, relevant to the curriculum being taught at the schools there needs to be something a little more structured. Absolutely and I think government, uh, there's got to be a private-public partnership between government, uh, the mobile network operators and the people in the education sphere and I think uh, we're seeing more and more collaboration in that space which is very encouraging mm -hmm. and we're seeing a lot of very powerful content being generated in multiple languages which is also an issue in Africa uh, you know you need to cater for the French market in Franco Africa Portuguese and Mozambique uh, in English it's much people much easier for people to learn in, in their own language uh, what what needs to happen I think is is the collaboration is going to be around getting the relevant content making sure that it's available at the lowest common denominator even on the low-cost handsets as you were mentioning with basic internet and lowering the cost of access uh, is really really important in Korea for example which used to be a third world country government got behind lowering the cost of broadband and today Korea is one of the top uh, 10 countries in the world in terms of of economies um, and education now the operators um, have the um, solutions 
the government has the responsibility, uh, but where does the greatest weight uh, bear in terms of implementation? I, th I think it's a combination of, of the industry. I think uh, even a private enterprise, uh, we're seeing a lot of corporate social investment being done in this space. In fact, the Queen of Jordan at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in February this year made an appeal to all the mobile network operators to make a huge investment in mobile learning. Mm -hmm. uh, she was quoting a figure of 72 million children in Africa mm -hmm. not having education. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a huge issue that affects all of us mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, uh, this, there were some figures mentioned at Uganda, mm -hmm. at the Digital Africa Summit, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago that every 10% increase in, in connectivity or internet access actually has a 1.3% contribution to GDP. So if we can get more people to have access to information and have access to education, we can really uh, solve uh, a big problem in Africa because that's what Africa needs. It doesn't need handouts, it needs a, a Let's solution Let's talk about integrated education. solutions. We know that mobile phone access far outweighs internet penetration, but there's still a lot of work being done to try to get uh, people uh, uh, connected and to try to improve on broadband as we were talking earlier on. But we're talking something like 45% cell phone penetration versus 8% internet. So there's still a lot of catch up work that needs to be done, but it's being done. Absolutely, so, so what's happening is that I think uh, the biggest emphasis from a, a mobile network operator is around data growth. We're seeing that actually from a commercial perspective, voice average revenue per user, ARPU, is declining uh, simply because of competition. And we're moving towards the need to be able to provide the right data solution from a commercial perspective. There's also the corporate social responsibility of being able to contribute to your community and be being able to make internet available at lower costs. So I think what needs to happen is that government needs to get behind uh, lowering the cost of access and making content available for free. And I think uh, collaboration between mobile network operators and government right. would yield to, to a solution. Okay, now you've also participated in conferences and also in programs um, undertaken by the Ugandan government, the Nigerian government and also work here in South Africa. Just comparatively speaking, where are we at? I think that there's a, there's a long way to go. I mean, if we look at the uh, e-learning industry globally, it's a $52 billion industry, but mobile learning only makes 1.5 yeah. Uh, billion out of that 52, which just shows that it's a very, very small percentage. And I think in Africa, the only solution to connect to the internet will be a mobile handset. Many people will not have ex access to the PC. So we need to see uh, a, a big investment in, in getting lowering the cost of, of phones, as well as lowering the cost of access and the ability to reach uh, the masses.